The autumn effect is a great technique for adding a sense of atmosphere to landscape images. But one of the problems when you do it properly is that it can create really large file sizes if you're saving your images as TIFFs with all the layers intact. And also, there's the problem of clipping the shadows or just kind of crushing all the darker tones together and losing lots of detail. But when you do it right, you can avoid both of those problems. Let's take a look at how it's done. Before we get started, my new book, The Digital Darkroom, The Definitive Guide to Photo Editing in Adobe Photoshop and Affinity Photo is now available. For more information about the book and to order your copy, follow the link in the video description. So here we have a landscape image where I've already done some basic processing and I have some layers on the layers panel on the right hand side. So this is typically the process you would take you're going to be making changes adding different layers but then you add the autumn effect at the end now if you're working on a single layer image so it's just the background layer at this stage you could just hit Control and J and duplicate the layer but if like me you've got several layers in place already just make sure your top layer on the stack is active hold down Control, alt shift and E and that's going to merge all visible layers to a new layer at the top of the stack and then hit Control and J to duplicate that layer so we now have two solid pixel layers and in this top layer we just need to add some blur so just go up to filters blur Gaussian blur and then we need to set a radius that's going to be somewhere between 15 and 30 pixels and it ultimately depends on the megapixels of your camera so this shot here was taken with a 42 megapixel camera so i'm going for a radius of 25. so you may just need to experiment a bit to find the sweet spot for the sensor and the resolution of your camera so once you've found the radius you like just hit apply and then we're going to go up to the blending modes drop down menu that's set to normal by default and change it from normal to multiply next up just left mouse click on the pixel layer below and for this layer we are going to set the blending mode to screen so multiply is a darken blend mode screen is a lighten blend mode so we're kind of making those work against each other and balance exposure off but it's still a bit too dark and then what that is doing is it's bringing the sharpness or the original sharpness of the shot through but also it's bringing through that blur that we've just introduced on the layer above so just click on the top pixel layer again and then we're going to go down to the adjustment layer icon which is a half white half black circle at the bottom of the layers panel and select curves from the list of options so what I'm going to do here is just left mouse click on the bottom left point there and I'm just going to drag it up the left hand side and that's going to lighten the shadows but it's also going to lighten the overall image so I'm not going to push it too far because it does add a kind of washed out look but don't worry that's not going to be a problem and then I'm just going to take the center place a point in there and just lift it up and to the left just to get the right amount of brightness so what we're trying to achieve here is the original brightness before we created those two layers just a moment ago so once you're happy here just click on the cross to close down the curves adjustment and now we're at the point where we are going to reduce the file size of everything that we've just done so there we have three new layers so the curves adjustment at the top should be highlighted and active so just hold down Control, alt shift and e again so we've just merged all of those visible layers into a new layer at the top of the stack so now left mouse click on the curves adjustment hold down shift and click on the bottom pixel layer of those three so we've just got all of those three layers selected and drag those to the bin at the bottom of the layers panel so now we have the autumn effect in a single layer so let's just double click on there and then we can just rename that to autumn so we know what it is and there are just a few more things we need to do just to refine what we've done here so the first thing I'm going to do is change the blending mode from normal to luminosity and the reason for that is that 
As the layer was set up, we were introducing more saturation. So by changing the blending mode to luminosity, we haven't increased the saturation with the Orton effect. Of course, you could leave it at normal if you want to, but for me personally, I prefer to keep the colors as natural as possible. So now what we need to do is just click on this cog for the blend ranges at the top of the layers panel. So as we have the Orton layer active, this will apply to that layer. And then all we need to do now is just left mouse click at the top of that horizontal line on the left hand box. So we're working on the source layer ranges. And then just take the left hand corner point and drag that down to the middle there. But I'm just gonna take it back up and zoom in so we can have a look at those shadows. So you'll see what we're actually doing here. So if you just watch those shadows, as I pull that down, you'll see that where we have that muddiness and those darker tones have just completely crushed and there's, there isn't very much detail in there at all, by dragging this point down, we're actually maintaining that detail, but without losing the effect throughout the whole image. And one thing worth mentioning is if you accidentally place a point that you don't want, simply right mouse click on it and it will disappear. So that's all good. I'm just going to close that window down and then hold down control and zero so I can see the whole image. And the final thing that we need to do to finish things off is just reduce the opacity of the layer to anywhere between 20% and 35% because we don't want it to be so strong that it just looks rubbish, which at 100% it does. So there we have the effect at 35%, which is it's quite high. It's probably a little bit higher than I might normally use. For this shot, I'd probably go for 30, but I just want it to be really obvious. So let's have a look at the background here. So that's the effect off, and there we have our effect. So it's, it just softens things off really nicely. So that is how to apply the Orton effect in Affinity Photo in such a way that we don't increase file size too much and we don't lose shadow detail. Mm -hmm.